Hey, hello and welcome back. And today we're going to continue looking at the Synology NAS DSM7 platform. And in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to set up your NAS for audio for the very first time. And by audio, I of course mean music, audio books, that kind of stuff. And ultimately, I'm going to be showing you the best way to do it and what are the settings that matter the most. Now, do bear in mind that when you do want to listen to music on your NAS, it's not going to be enough that you set up the NAS on its own. You are going to need to do a little bit of work on your side. So depending on what device you're going to be utilizing, be it a network streaming device or an internet streaming device, if you're going to be using your phone and you're going to be using the internet, or you're going to be using like a Sonos sound system or um, any kind of Bose network sound system, you're going to have to make sure that those, are, those later ones are network network enabled and if you're going to use a mobile device and again that does also include to a point things like iPads and even fire sticks that you're either going to be accessing the NAS via the network over a method known as DLNA or UPNP which is Digital Living Network Alliance and Universal Plug and Play or if you're going to be utilizing net I'm um, sorry internet level access to the NAS you're going to have to make sure that you've activated remote access to the, the device on your NAS and that's going to include utilization of a Synology account in order to activate remote access on your device so it's worth remembering that these are important options with quick connect and Synology account that although I'm not going to talk about in this video because as promised in this series I'm not going to show you guys how to enable internet access on this series until you've done all of the settings if you are going to access the music on your NAS remotely via the internet this is something you will need to activate. All the steps in today's video are largely assigned to accessing your media over the network, so do bear that in mind. So, also it's worth highlighting prior to this, I did look at photography tools on the Synology NAS, and there is a little bit of crossover. So if you did watch that video, I am going to tell you stuff that I've already said in that video, and although I might go over it a little quicker, I have to mention it in case someone's come to this video with fresh ears. So the first thing to do is to head into the control panel. In the control panel, head to the bottom where you see indexing services. Indexing is how the NAS regularly scans the internal storage and keeps a record of what files are in there and the metadata such as file format and, divide, and when it was created. Go into indexing services and from there you'll see an option marked indexing folder. Now this will list the folders where the NAS is currently scanning internally for media. So for example, the slash video folder is where the NAS will look for video. Indeed, if we go into the file station application and look at the default folders, as we install different applications, new folders will appear. Depending on the applications you've installed, these photo, this album structure will change. But if your music resides in a preset location on the NAS, head into these options and click Create. From there, given a, a folder name such as Audiobooks, and then from there, select the folder that it lives in on the NAS. So in my case, rather than using the music folder, I could have gone into Share Test, gone into my Plex Media Server Collection, and selected Music. And then from there, I could have clicked Select, said that this album contains music, and when I click OK, it will add that folder to this collection. As you can see, I've already done it there. Then go ahead and click Save. This will add that folder to the indexing path of the NAS, and when the NAS does periodic scans internally, it will check that folder for music and then label it internally as music to be utilized in music services. Now, in order to upload files and folders, we've already covered that in a previous video, but just to let you know, you can always just create an album right here, create a folder, call it music, that folder you can then open and then from your PC, if you choose to, you can just drag and drop directly into it if you so choose, straight into that window. Now, you can, if you choose to, play music directly from within this album. You can right click and just click play if you choose 
and it will open up a default player. I've had to mute this video due to YouTube's terms and conditions, but it does allow you to play music in the web browser. But of course, no one's really in the mind to do that. You want to enjoy music in a particular way. One of the most common ways to do it these days is to take advantage of iTunes. If you're using an Apple device or an iTunes streaming supported media server, you can head into the application center, head into the all packages option, and in the drop down, select multimedia. And from there, you'll see a selection of multimedia tools. We're going to be looking at iTunes server, media server, and audio station today. Although there are third party tools such as Mimin server, MB server, and of course, Plex media server that I will be talking about in a future video. First up, let's go into iTunes server. iTunes server is quite simplistic, but quite useful. It utilizes uh, your local area network and is linked to the media indexing that we just discussed. Give your iTunes server a name. If you want to give it a password, you can go ahead and do that. And you can also create smart playlists based on the albums that you can then add media to. But what will happen now is if you're utilizing a client device that supports network iTunes servers, it will find this iTunes server, which has access to the media indexing that we created earlier in the indexing folder. So as soon as you enable this option, and as long as you don't add a password, your client hardware in your own home or business environment will pick up the iTunes server easily and have access to whatever music media you indexed. But a lot of you don't like to rely on proprietary server configurations like iTunes and like something a bit more generalized, such as DLNA and UPnP. For those users, I recommend the media server application. Install it, open the application, and then you'll be given a bunch of options on how to set up your NAS for audio. At first, it will ask you which network interface you wish to use. By default, you're presumably connecting your NAS to the router or switch in your home or business environment, which has access to the internet. Now, you can, if you have a NAS that's got multiple LAN ports, add a different LAN connection and therefore dedicate that second ethernet connection between the NAS and your router and switch to just this iTunes server to free up a lot of bandwidth. But again, this media server application doesn't just cover music, it covers photos and video as well. So whatever settings you use here will be utilized by the media server for those other services as well. You can choose how you want things displayed, whether you want a cover art to be utilized and whether you want to connect internet radio services and more as far as audio is concerned. Finally, you can choose whether you want audio conversion to be enabled. Bear in mind that some audio types might not be supported by your client hardware, that is to say the device that's going to play the audio. So if you want to, you can either make sure that audio conversion takes place on certain restricted and more complex media types like FLAC or FLAC, as well as choosing to intentionally <clears throat> force the system to convert particular audio types if you choose and therefore making sure that if you have a media collection with a particularly obscure codec, you can force the system to uh, convert that file. But just bear in mind that the Synology NAS platform and indeed some of its audio applications such as Audio Station only support certain audio kinds. <clears throat> if you head into Synology's Audio Station application, you can find a list of supported audio formats, both via DLNA media streamers and the applications and services. Now we've gone through those options on the media server, this NAS will now appear on our local area network as an available media server. And again, you can search via a local server over DLNA on your client hardware, or if you're going to be ut utilizing an Amazon Fire Stick, you can download numerous applications for Amazon Fire Stick that allow you to stream multimedia over the network easily. Some are paid for, such as DG UPnP, and some of them are free, such as VLC or Kodi. Even Plex Media Server streams music, although bear in mind we will cover that more in a future video. 
go to this article, hopefully linked in the description, where I go into a lot more detail and about how to install each of these individual applications. Now we've got that audio set up, we can talk about the main audio application, which is Audio Station. This, scraping metadata where possible and accessing the media index that we set up earlier, will allow you to see your entire media collection here on the desktop. From here, you can choose to create playlists, which will then be accessed and utilized by iTunes server and the DLNA media server application where appropriate. You can also add other media servers on your network if you have multiple devices and therefore access the content of those other devices and their own media to stream to yours and connect them together. You can access all the music or play individual files if you choose very easily. And again, I've had to mute this system because we are utilizing YouTube video here, but you can do a lot of stuff to edit some of the information there, download lyrics, stream to other devices and more. And again, all of that can be done via this interface as well as sharing locally or via the network, or sorry, locally via the network or the internet if you have those settings enabled here. It's all playable and again, you just add more music to the file station collection and the album you're indexing and it will all appear here. And you can search by the metadata that's connected if the case they're in different albums or whether they've got different tracks, artists and more, as well as connecting internet radio services if you choose very easily. And if files are shared with you, they'll also appear on a shared list here. Bear in mind there are configuration options dedicated just to this tool. You can go ahead and say which users have got access to it, whether you want to utilize a lyric download servers, whether you want to connect iTunes song ratings to this system, but you will need to utilize an existing XML download from an online iTunes server, as well as connect to your personal library if you choose to, and whether it's your shared list of other servers or just your own personal music. Finally, you can have a look at the advanced tab here, which has got more services connecting to Smart Home and DLNA. If you are utilizing Amazon Alexa, where there has been a skill that has been accessible for the Amazon Alexa platform, you can voice request music from your Amazon Alexa from the NAS by enabling this feature and installing the application on your Amazon Alexa from the available skills. And of course, you will need to activate the Synology Online Quick Connect and Account settings in order to set this up. Then you've got the DLNA settings, which will allow the uh, Synology Audio Station um, settings and collections, playlists, albums, and more to be accessible over DLNA, as well as your own dedicated list of options specific to Audio Station for conversions, for file format configuration support, whether different audio types will be supported on DLNA, and whether you'll use that dedicated network interface. Again, the options are quite diverse, but quite specific to individual users. And remember, if you are a PC user, you can always just head straight into the PC settings on your computer, on the My Computer or This PC tab, then go into Access Media, go into Connect to a Media Server, and over the local area network, the NAS will appear. Click on it, click Next. It will then start communicating with the network server over the local area network and then it will allow you to add this server to your list of available media servers. The amount of time this will take will depend on the busyness of the NAS, the busyness of your network connection and of course the PC that you're utilizing. But this is just another way in which you can communicate with the media on your NAS shortly and it, it will add this new Synology server to our list of available servers here on the My Computer setting of My Computer. But for now, let's wrap things up. This has been how to connect with and enjoy and convert media on your Synology NAS. I'm hoping to do a dedicated follow-up video to utilizing Amazon Alexa with your Synology NAS very, very soon. As you can see, you can at any time access this media via these applications over DLNA, remotely over the internet if you enable the Quick Connect setting, and of course you can access it 
on a local PC if you choose to as a media server. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more, click the bell to be notified and subscribe as new videos become available in this series. And next up, we're going to be looking at video, enjoying your movies, your box sets and more on your NAS, as well as scraping metadata to have all the cover art and other ways in which you can enjoy the video on your Synology NAS with DSM-7. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.